My team is the American people not the insiders in Washington. I'm happy to be in the tradition of Ronald Reagan as the outsider who scares the Republican establishment. You hear a lot of talk about, uh, you know, who's the insider and who's the outsider in this race. Someone who was actually inside Washington, who was an outsider when he was inside. Stop Washington insiders. Rick Perry, a conservative for president. The Republican candidates all like to position themselves as outsiders, but is anyone buying it? Joining us now, I can't get the words out. Joining us now is Dave Carney, a former White House political director under President George H.W. Bush, and most recently, chief strategist for Rick Perry's presidential campaign. Thanks for joining the program. Thanks for having me. So, uh, you know, Mr. Carney, when we talk about outsiderdom, uh, looking at the, the, the record of the, 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 the professional record of the candidates on stage, we have Newt Gingrich, who, of course, served as Speaker of the House. Uh, Santorum spent 16 years in Washington. Ron Paul, 22 years. Mitt Romney, obviously governor of Massachusetts, scion of a political dynasty. Do you think anybody in the American electorate is buying the notion that any of these guys is an outsider? I think some of them are, but I, but it's it's really not their resume that uh, distinguishes an insider from outsider, in my opinion. It's their passion, it's their rhetoric, it's the tone of their uh, presentation, it's the issues that they choose to talk about. The vote, you know, are you worried about what the lobbyists and the funders and the insiders in Washington care about, or are you talking about what people on Main Street are are discussing today in the diner uh, having a hamburger? I mean, it's it isn't your. I don't believe it's your resume. I think it is your your your, your rhetoric and how you relate to Amer American people and, and voters. And I think they pick up on the: Are you real when you talk about your concerns, or are you are you being phony and, and just uh, uh, talking in government uh, government speak? Or I, I thought last night Senator Santorum did himself a tremendous disservice talking about leave no child left behind. He did it, you know, because he's part of the team. Took you know, I'm against it, but I voted for it to be part of the team. People in America have been looking at the team, you know, that's been going on in Washington for a long time from both sides of the aisle. They're not very happy with results. And I think that kind of accommodation and that kind of language really turns voters off. I want to bring in the panel here because I don't understand something. I understand wh wh why you would want maybe an outsider to go into Congress. But in terms of a commander in chief of the office of president, look, if I was an independent voter and I really didn't like Ob the president's record, I'd say it's because he didn't know what he was doing. He's not a political animal, doesn't understand how Washington's, wor Washington's worked. And, and then I look at the Tea Party and the Tea Party insurgents, and they basically created an obstructionist <laughs> Congress. I'd want someone who understands the machinations it of Washington. It seems like voters want it both ways. We had a Washington outsider in Herman Cain, and voters decided summarily that he didn't know enough. So there's this impulse, especially within the Tea Party wing of the Republican Party, to get someone who is not tainted by the dirty hands of Washington. But at the same time, you want someone that's sort of been around the block and knows what they're doing, knows the players, knows how to talk political speak. I mean, it's, it's a hard uh, bargain, and it's a big, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a demand to ask of our candidate, but voters want it all. <laughs> I think the problem here is a question of credibility. It's just not really credible for Newt Gingrich to say he's an outsider, given that he's former Speaker of the House. It's not for really sure. credible for Rick Santorum, who was in the United States Senate, to say, and, and speaks like he's still a senator last night, for him to say he's an outsider. I mean, they've got to come up with a different message. This sort of notion that, well, he's so inside, he's actually outside. I mean, people aren't <laughs> buying that. <laughs> I was inside, but I was outside when I was Exactly. Inside. I mean, that's just not credible. And it gets to their, it gets to an issue of credibility when they speak to the public. Governor? Uh, 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 Go ahead, Jerry. I, I mean, I just think this is all so ridiculous. Uh, I look back four years ago, and John McCain, who had been in the Senate for 45 years, says, I'm the maverick, I'm the renegade. Uh, it's always the same message that somehow I'm different. What right. should differentiate you are your ideas. And as David was saying, your passion. I'm going to do this to reform and change Washington. And Obama is the ultimate insider, I mean, sitting there in the White House. But we keep, we keep getting caught up in terms like who's further outside. Well, Sarah Palin was from Alaska. She was on way outside. That didn't work out so well. We want somebody who has passion and ideas as to what they're going to do to move the country in a different direction and who can inspire the American people behind that. And we didn't have that. Governor, last why time. aren't you running? <laughs> 
Good question. For what, For what Alex? <laughs> For anything. Um, uh, Dave Carney. have a mayor's job open. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, Ms. Mr. Texas Carney, in you your could mind, them. who is making the most winning argument then on stage as we, as we look to an eventual nominee? <clears throat> well, I think in terms of on the stump, I think Senator Santorum is actually hitting the right, right tones right now in terms of his populist message. Uh, you know, last night was uh, an abnormal performance for him in the last few months. Uh, he's done a pretty good job on the debates. and But on the stump and what he's talking about, his message, I think, resonates with with uh, voters. And, and Governor Romney and his allies are spending millions of dollars to you know redefine Santorum as an insider. But uh, the populist arguments that he talks about, um, you know, putting the manufacturing back to work and, and sort of having that, uh, that gritty authenticity that he has, uh, nice. talking about blue-collar workers. He comes from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So he's got a lot of experience in dealing with that sort of, uh, you know, voter that is not necessarily a partisan, but, you know, is really looking out, who's looking out for their best interests. So, you know, I think right now he is, but he's going to get a next five days. He's going to have a ton of uh, redefinition coming down on his head and TVs you know, in Arizona and Michigan. Indeed. Um, thank you, David Carney, for joining us. Enjoy that fresh New Hampshire air, which is distinctly outside of Washington. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, coming up, two U.S. troops have been killed in Afghanistan as President Obama sends an apology to President Hamid Karzai for the Quran burning at NATO's main Afghan air base. Details on the escalating situation next in What Now?